The North American International Championships have just concluded in New Orleans, where we saw over 2,600 players competing to become an international champion. Now, six of the top eight decks were Gardevoir, as well as Gardevoir being the number one represented deck in day two, with about 21% meta share. It was also the deck I played and one of my favorite decks historically. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over some Gardevoir puzzles. Now, these puzzles are inspired from games that I either came across in testing or at the International Championship itself. And the focus of these puzzles is to come up with the optimal line. Now, in every puzzle, you do have a hand, but for some of them, the contents of your hand are not necessarily super important. And the focus is thinking about how you want to approach your turn and how you want to attack your opponent's board. Now, for this video, I'm going to be using Keto's list from the top four of the International Championship, as it was fairly similar to the list I played in that he has no Manaphy and no Radiant Greninja. Now, um, I do think that the Clef Key should be a staple moving forward, as we saw Drew Hedrick take down the tournament with Lost Box. So this is going to be the list I'm using for these puzzles. So without further ado, let's get into the first puzzle. In our first puzzle today, we find ourselves behind in the Gardevoir mirror. We've been having our Curlias knocked out over and over by this Screamtail, while we have been using Cresselia to knock out our opponent's Curlias. But we are running out of time and need to come back in the prize trade. So in this position, we've already drawn for turn and used Refinement. Here are the contents of our hand, and here are the contents of our deck. So you can pause the video here and come up with a plan on how we are going to come back in the prize trade. And you can also come up with the specific sequencing of this turn if you would like, but the focus is going to be on coming up with a plan on coming back in the prize trade. Some other relevant information that you might want to know is that this is our opponent's discard pile. They have four energies in there uh, if that affects your decision making. Now, we have a couple of options in order to come back. The first thing that might come to mind is blowing up the opponent's Gardevoir EX with Drifloon. However, this leaves us exceptionally vulnerable, as if we were to use Drifloon, our opponent could simply take a two-prize turn right back by using Monkey Dory to knock out our Drifloon, and then using Screamtail to knock out something on our bench, or creating a new Gardevoir EX if they need a stronger attacker for that final prize. So what we're gonna go for here instead is a stall play. Now, you'll notice that our opponent has four psychic energies in the discard, which means that if we go for something like an Iono here, uh, you could play Iono and Countercatcher, we could bring in this Manaphy, and we can knock out the Curlia on the bench. Now, this is going to leave our opponent with two cards in hand and no draw support, and they need to find a way to retreat this Manaphy, or else they are going to draw pass. Now, in uh, in theory, it might seem unlikely, but if you think about it more deeply, our opponent has very few outs to draw out of this. They have a couple of Toro scenarios, uh, a Dark Energy, an Earthen Vessel, maybe another Psychic Energy in their hand, and a lot of cards that just don't help them. If our opponent whiffs and draw passes, we can simply bomb their Gardevoir EX on the next turn and win the game. Now, another interesting strategy here would have been to bring in the Gardevoir EX and attack it with Fluttermane, shutting off the Psychic Embrace ability and trapping the Gardevoir EX in the active. This play comes up sometimes, but in this position, I think it is significantly worse as it allows our opponent to use Refinement, and they could also just evolve the benched one into another Gardevoir EX, uh, meaning they can use the bench Gardevoir EX's Psychic Embrace to retreat and go down to one prize, basically winning the game. In our second puzzle today, we have again been punished for not playing Manaphy by a turn two Ogre Upon attack. Now, this is crippling as we've lost our active Fluttermane and our benched Curlia, but this game is still winnable. It requires a little bit of tact, but pause the video here and find out what is the best way to stabilize our board and start a comeback in this game.
Now, of course, this comeback is going to start with a reset stamp, but before we do that, we need to figure out what our best attacker is. Now, I believe that the best thing to do this turn is likely use a Gardevoir EX to knock out Archeops. Now, our turn could play out something like this. We promote the Curlia, draw for turn, find some energies, uh, maybe just get rid of this Monkey Dory, uh, get our energies, discard one with refinement, make a Gardevoir EX, play some other cards, whatever, set up our board, and then we're gonna countercatcher in an Archeops, reset stamp, and knock it out with Gardevoir EX. Now, there's a couple reasons this is good. First of all, our opponent's legacy energy is in the deck, meaning if they want to Ogre Pawn us again, they're going to have to use their only chops to do so, meaning they won't be able to power up more attackers. Now, even if they have something like a boss's orders off of this reset stamp, you know, say they go uh, Luminion boss, and then they uh, Archeops for the legacy energy and Ogre Pawn us again, well, they're going to have to shuffle all these energies off the Ogre Pawn, and even if they wipe our Curlias completely off the board, then we can just bring in this other Chops and leave them with basically no attackers on the board, as all these energies from the Ogre Pawn will be in the deck, and then from there we could potentially use Professor Turo if necessary to heal off our Guard of War EX, um, maybe if our opponent attacks with a Lugia V-Star or something, and we can make a comeback from there. What's also very likely is that our opponent doesn't draw boss's orders off this reset stamp, and they just have to punch into our EX and knock out a bench Curlia, putting our opponent on three prizes. At which point, our game plan is going to be pretty much the same. Wipe out the other chops, and then knock out two two-prize Pokemon to win the game. Now, this plan is not completely foolproof, but it does give you the best chance of winning, especially if our opponent draws three bad cards off of Unfair Stamp, which I have seen my opponents do plenty of times. Moving on to our third puzzle today. This one is fairly quick. It is just an exercise in setting up the ideal board against a block lax opponent. Now, our opponent has gone first and just used instant charge. So what Pokemon do we want to put in play here, if any? And what is our game plan for shutting out this stall strategy? Now, when we play the Klefki and the Fluttermain, it is actually very easy to board lock ourselves into something ideal. So in a situation like this, you could bench Fluttermain, Poffin for a couple Ralts, do, 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 Ralts and Ralts, and then our final bench spot can be found with this Arvin, and we can just Nussball or Poffin for Drifloon. Now, what this means is as the game progresses, we're going to set up a Gardevoir EX, which is going to need a couple of energies on it so that it can attack. Ideally, a Dark Energy is a great uh, find there if I can set this up properly. Here we go, we got our Gardevoir EX. Then we're going to need a Psychic Energy on each of our Ralts so that they can use Teleportation Burst and the remainder of our Psychic Energies minus one on our Drifloon. So this is going to be uh, 40 damage on our Drifloon. Now, what we've set up here is a board state where none of our Pokemon can be stalled out by this Snorlax deck. If our opponent brings up Klefki or Fluttermane, we can just use Psychic Embrace to put an energy on it and retreat and go back into any of these other Pokemon. Gardevoir can attack, Drifloon can attack, and the Ralts can also attack and switch themselves back to the bench. Now, if our Klefki ever racks up too much damage from being retreated too many times, we can put a Bravery Charm on it to get more HP, or we can use one of our Professor Turos in order to pick it up. Additionally, in this matchup, if you ever start a Pokemon that uh, is not one of these Pokemon, so you start Monkey Dory, Tatsugiri, or if you're playing a different list, Manaphy or Greninja, you can always use a Turo to set up this board. Or maybe if your opponent hits a lucky accompanying Flute, Again, Turo, set up this board, and it's pretty much unbreakable. One thing to watch out for from these Snorlax decks is a Mawile, because if they play Mawile, they can trap this Clef Key. Uh, even though Mischievous Lock shuts off Snorlax, it does not shut off Mawile, so you're going to need to have Professor Turos in order to get out of that.
All right, in our fourth puzzle today, we are facing down some serious aggression from Raging Bolt Ogre Pond. We have managed to somewhat stabilize our board and are ready to attack. Now, there are a couple of things we need to be afraid of, notably a potential boss's orders on our Gardevoir EX or a lost vacuum on a tool card if we use a big uh, Drifloon or Screen Tail. So pause the video here and come up with the safest way to take your six prizes, assuming that you can draw whatever you want. I mean, in this spot, we've got Iono, so we're going to start with six and a couple refinements. So don't worry too much about the specific hand. Instead, try to think about the safest way to take your six prizes. In a position like this, it might seem tempting to just use a Drifloon and one-shot the active Raging Bolt. But this actually leaves you very vulnerable to having your tool loss zone and your Gardevoir EX potentially bossed or Pokemon captured into the active. And our opponent's going to take a three prize turn, which is going to completely shut us out of the game. So what we're going to want to do here is avoid using Bravery Charm as much as possible. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. The first way to do this is to use Screamtail, of course, and knock out the Squawk ability. Now, the problem with this is if we use Screamtail and knock out the Squawk ability and our opponent knocks out our Gardevoir EX, we're going to have to put down another Gardevoir EX in order to establish a relevant attacker, at which point our opponent can just knock out the Gardevoir EX again. Uh, although it is very difficult for them to do this, they could pull it off and we would lose. So in a position like this, what I consider to be the ideal strategy is to go for a 3 energy Drifloon which is going to be 60 damage, and this is going to do 180 damage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combo this with some Monkey Dory damage, say uh, maybe bank some damage counters on this Gardevoir EX, for example, move it with Monkey Dory, and we're going to knock out one of these Ogre Ponds with Drifloon with the additional 30 damage from Monkey Dory. Now, what this does is it makes it, so if our opponent knocks out our Gardevoir EX, oh, Sorry, I forgot to mention something. One more thing you're going to want to do, if possible, is bank some damage on the board. Now, this could be done by retreating. Maybe we promote the Curlia at the start of the turn instead. Double attach with Psychic Embrace and retreat so that our Curlia has damage on it. This is important because if our opponent bombs our Gardevoir EX, um, we can replicate the ways of old Gardevoir and not put down a new one. Uh, we could do something like use Monkey Dory. Uh, we're going to need another Curlia down just in case, but um, use Monkey Dory, heal off this Curlia, uh, put some damage on the next Ogre Pond, knock it out, go to two prizes, and then you're going to be able to go 2-2-2 two, two, two without ever risking multiple two prize turns for your Ogre Pond opponent. All right, looking at our fifth puzzle, we are facing off against Drew Hedrix, Lost Box Jack from NAIC, and we have been sitting behind Klefki and Fluttermane for the entire game up until now, where our opponent has managed to get seven in the Lost Zone and pull off an Ampu very much. Now, of course, we have to respond to this Iron Hand somehow, but there are several uh, ways to do so. So, Pause the video here and come up with the best way to deal with this Iron Hands. And now the first thing that might come to mind when dealing with this Iron Hands is that we can one-shot it with a Drifloon and a Bravery Charm. However, I don't think this is a very good idea as it leaves us very vulnerable to Sableye. If we just trade prizes back and forth for the rest of the game, uh, we are going to lose as we are behind. So instead of going in with a Drifloon, I recommend just attacking with a Gardevoir EX as it can soak up an Ampu very much. So in a spot like this, you're going to want to go in with a Gardevoir. Um, reset, or sorry, Unfair Stamp is going to be crucial as well as putting a Bravery Charm on something on your bench. Now, uh, for example, you could put it on the Fluttermane here so that if our opponent activates Iron Bundle, we have a Pokemon to promote that cannot be uh, one-shot by Ampu very much. Then from here, you can set up a Gardevoir EX, 
uh, potentially activate Monkey Dory to put some damage on his hands so that we can Monkey Dory it again on the following turn. Uh, and I think that pretty much covers everything you're going to want to do on this turn. Um, this unfair stamp is really important, as if our opponent has like Prime Catcher, for example, they're going to be able to amp again, or uh, Iron Bundle plus Loss Vacuum is also going to allow them to amp for two more, at which point we are going to be very far behind. But if you stamp your opponent and they do pull this off, the game is not completely lost. Say they knock out uh, this Curlia with Ampy very much. What you can do from here is you can go in with Fluttermane. This hands is going to have a ton of damage on it, likely 220. And then you could go for something like an Iono to 2. Um, hopefully recover this Clef Key so that you can't be Iron Bundled. Uh, potentially bring in a Comfy with Counter Catcher um, if our opponent's on two prizes. And then you can take a three prize turn. Leave your opponent with... Do, do, do. Leave your opponent with two cards in hand and no abilities, and this game is still very winnable. That is why Fluttermane and Klefki are so powerful against these Law Zone decks, because even if you fall behind very far, once you deal with the Iron Hands, they have very limited attacking options, mostly just Sableye um, as ways to find their last couple of prizes. All right, our final puzzle today is going to be a multi-step puzzle where we're playing against Charizard. Now, in this position, we've used Drifloon to knock out their Pidgeot EX, and they responded with a Lost Vacuum to knock out our Drifloon, and then they have also or also knocked out a Ralts that we promoted, putting them down to three prize cards. So in this position, some notable resources are that our opponent has used their loss vacuum and that we uh, are down a bravery charm, meaning that we cannot one shot both of these Charizards. So we're gonna need to get a little bit creative with our prize mapping. Pause here and come up with what you think is the best route to take our last four prize cards. Now, we're going to be looking to make some kind of Toro play on our EX or potentially an Iono play, but I think it's best to wait a turn and see what our opponent does and then spring the trap. So this turn, what I think is best is just to um, recover this Drifloon. The Arbin can get us a Bravery Charm and Super Rod. Then we can go like Artisan, get the guy back. Um, they move the damage off our Curlia with Monkey Dory and take this one shot with Drifloon. Now, this is good for several reasons. The first is that if our opponent does not respond to this Drifloon, um, we're going to be able to knock out two Charizards successfully. And the other thing working for us, um, well, because of this, they can't knock out our Gardevoir EX, right? So what they're likely going to do, um, potentially use Charizard DX. They could also potentially use a one prizer, maybe get into like Radzard or something, but it doesn't change our game plan too much. Um, if they kill our Gardevoir EX, we're just going to Drift Loon them back. Um, so I'm assuming what they're going to do is just knock out this Drift Loon. Now our opponent's going to meet us at two prizes, and the predicament here is that we can't one-shot this Charizard. We have no Bravery Charms. So I kind of alluded to it, but you can pause the video here again and come up with two... There's two ways to go about closing out this endgame. One of them is a little bit cleaner, um, but a little harder to pull off. So pause the video here and come up with your ideal turn. Bonus points if you can come up with a backup plan. Alright, so an ideal turn here is going to consist of turrowing our Gardevoir EX off the board and just attacking with pretty much whatever you want. Um, you could attack with uh, no, I was going to say Monkey Dory. Monkey Dory does not work. You're going to need a little more damage than that. Um, I think ideally you attack with Drifloon here again for 180. Um, you could also maybe attack with the Scream Tail if it wasn't prized for uh, 160. Just something to set up enough damage that on the next turn 
um, we could take a knockout with Gardevoir EX or another Drifloon or just some kind of plan that involves two-shotting this Charizard. Now, if we don't have Professor Turo, uh, I mean, it's possible that we are unable to draw it. A good backup plan, um, well, I say good, it's not incredible, but a backup plan would be to use Fluttermane Countercatcher in this Barrel, um, play an Iono or a Reset Stamp, and then we can go for a double prize turn with the Flutter main, right? So we can hit this bib for 90. We can use uh, Monkey Dory. Oops, that's 19. I hit this for 90. We can use Monkey Dory, pile up a bit of damage on this Manaphy. And then if our opponent doesn't find a way to remove this barrel from play and also gust our, well, not remove it from play, move it out of the active, and then also gust our Gardevoir EX, we're going to be able to win on the next turn by knocking out this Manaphy and Babarel in one go. That's going to be it for our Gardevoir puzzle video today. I think I covered a lot of the ideas this new Gardevoir deck brings to the table between Fluttermane, Klefki, and Drifloon. There's really a lot of options with this deck now, especially Unfair Stamp gives you a lot of comeback potential and ways to punish your opponent for taking uh, just one prize at the start of the game. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and potentially try out this deck at some local tournaments as we head into a summer without any League Cups. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.